what I'm going to talk about, or what I'm about today, is um, about enclosures, pots, tubs, things like that. You see it come up on Facebook, um, Instagram, things like that. Questions about what people use for slings and the various stages and things. So I thought, oh well, it's something I might sort of have a look at and do a bit of a video on it. Um, so I've got a few examples of the various pots that I use and how I use them in different ways for fossorials, arboreals, terrestrials and that. Um, I mean, it is quite a long video, so I apologise in advance, but um, grab a brew and hopefully, you know, everybody will get something out of it. It's, it is aimed more at the beginners and those that will be looking to ask these questions on Facebook, but like I say, I'm going to shut up anyway and we'll crack on. Cheers. So right, first up, we're going to talk the different stages. So we'll start off with slings and the obvious choice for me when rehousing slings are these little pots. I think everybody will recognise these. It's quite often what your spider mill will arrive in. I pretty much house any sort of sling. Um, up to a couple of centimetres um, I've got a couple of examples here I'm going to show you just of different ways that I use them myself now first up this is just a little terrestrial sling this is my Fonapelma Johnny Cashy but you'll see there I've just got a little bit of substrate in the bottom. I did dig a little tunnel down the side for it as a burrow, but it seems to have filled that in at some point over time. Um, but yeah, and I just give this a little drip of water once a week. feed it once a week and that's pretty much it but that's say one of these little sling pots used for a terrestrial right next I've got a Syriopagabus hati hati sling which you may just be able to make out there in its little cork tube or behind its little cork tube this has actually just malted, as you'll see there. So, yeah, so we'll get that out while we're here. You see, you just see. Some feet there. Little hatty hatty malt. Anyway, like I say, it's just malt, so I don't want to mover it too much. But yeah, this being an old world. And from a more temperate climate, I do keep that a lot, the substrate a lot more moist than I would in the likes of the the Versi or something along those lines. I tend to keep Versi's quite dry myself, um, but I'll touch on that later on. So yeah, that's my Hattie Hattie. So that's an example of how it can be used arboreal, a little bit of cork back up the side. The spider's built its dirt curtains, webbed it up, perfectly happy. Next, this is a burrowing, or a fossorial tea, Hapoclastus devamartha, the 
RSD Earth Tiger. Hmm. You'll see here. Oh, you may just see some spinnerets there and some feet in that hole but anyway because uh, this one was filled quite about three quarters with substrate I give it a little starter burrow that I put in myself and then I've essentially left the spider to its own devices this is what it's done um, look in here I'm wondering if that might actually be a mould I'm not sure if it's a mould or whether it's legs just at a funny angle but yeah so like I say a fossorial in one of these sling pots right next up as sort of a progression from the sling pots I um, I quite regularly use these little pots here um, you see they're about same height similar height but about twice the width all round of the sling pots um, tend to use them as the next step up from those and again the size of them you can use them in a diff different sort of ways so I'll put this to one side I've got a couple of examples here just of how to use the same pots in different different ways really so here no, this is COVID this is my Syria Cosmos Giganteus which likes to burrow so you may just be able to see him in there just chilling but yeah you see here this one feel quite deep with substrate I just started a little starter burrow in on one side as it is he or she has gone on and done the rest perfectly happy probably get another one maybe even two more molts in this before I seriously need to think about changing it because this is a dwarf species anyway although from what I understand it is one of the larger if not the largest of the Syria Cosmos genus um, but yeah that's COVID so called as he was bought at the beginning of lockdown and spent 10 days in the post and then this one here is one of my sea verses so as you'll see I have this as a more arboreal setup see the little dude in there webbed it up now I know there's a lot of women and iron about husbandry with these and humidity and things well as you can see here I have quite a bit of ventilation in the top I've got ventilation in the sides but in regards to the substrate I just tend to wet one corner and leave it dry out I keep these pretty dry if I'm honest um, I don't seem to have had any problems with the ones I've had so far but again this is just what seems to work for me I'm not saying it's the way it should be done I'm certainly not telling you that this is the way to do it but I know a lot of people get hung up in regards to humidity and moist substrate and things like that especially with slings of these because they are known for being so delicate so but yeah like I say that's how I keep mine just happens to be in one of these an arboreal 
set up inside it. So um, one last look at them, or her, and we'll move on. Yep, another regular little pot that I use, and again, everyone should recognise these. I would imagine these are what you get your murray or worms in. So they come with a lid, no holes in them, so you can add the ventilation if you so need to, but. As you see from these the lids do come vented anyway so it's up to you as to whether you'd want to add any more yourself no you see here I've got a Nandu Chromatis uh, Nia Holofelli Inci Gold and a Nandu Carol Poensis these are just a few I've got other teas in these I've got uh, Kilobrachus fimbriatus slings. I've got OBT sling in one of these, but um, I just thought get these again. It's just to show you an example. Now this one has got a water bowl in there. Quite often I don't bother with water bowls until the tea reaches about the size of a two pence piece, and you'll see in there that is about the size it is once it's spread out it's about the size of a 2p piece but I put a water bowl in there and it just fills it up I find it quite ironic how the soil in the water bowl is drier than everywhere else if I'm honest but I do digress so I'll shut off for a second and we'll get back to this so yeah a little bit of cork bark a little fake plant a water bowl relatively deep substrate And that's one happy little Nandu Chromatis. Next, I'll show you the NNC Gold. You might not see the spider here, but you see the setup. A couple of little bits of cork bark, some fake plants, just plenty of stuff for it to have anchor points and options for webbing. Um, I am actually going to give this a bit of a sock. to it and then lastly this nandu oh. oh this one's just malted quite recent by the looks of it so we shall take that out probably a bit small it probably could be sex but it's too small for me to be bothered if I'm honest tend to not rush sex in any of my teas um, just wait till they get big enough and then do it when there's no hassle and less chance of getting it wrong so again we'll give this one a bit this one you see it has malted so it's gained a bit of size I'll probably add a water ball into this now but again quite simple quite basic hide bit of fake plants and that's about it so that's the Mario tubs right now another thing I really like to use are these sort of screw lid beakers from Wilco's see this has got Pelinobius muticus the king baboon and this one so they are sold as a beaker for drinks and things like that um, you'll just see in there there is the spider now this is a grown on sling it's about two inches I'd say 
um, who has been in this enclosure for a while, you see, really deep substrate, and the spiders actually hold up right down at the bottom there behind the sign. It is quite active, I do see it wandering around and it comes up to the top quite often. So there, that's another morphosaurial type setup this time. It's my Syria Cosmos Elegans. Sure, if I can ever get the focus to pick up. No, but you can sort of just make out the shape. Oh, there we are. That's our Syria Cosmos Elegance. See so this one, not as much as the King Baboon about halfway two thirds filled with substrate and this one is doing well it's molted in there a few times seems to be really happy I will just give it a little bit of a soak while I'm here And yet, as you might have guessed, I also use them for my arboreal teas. My grown on slings and juvies. I've got ornithopton and I in these. I've got quite a few porkies in these. And this one, this particular one, is you may be able to see down the bottom there. And just see. Black and orange should give it away. This is, of course, my Salma Pierce Aminia, or one of. I do have a little water ball in here, but yeah. I'll just drop it in. This one has been in this particular pot since being a sling. Um, I say it's come through no real problems, no hassles. So that's them ones. Right, so next up, we're going to look at these. These are the 1.3 litre Bray Plast tubs that come with the bendy flappy lids. And again, I use these for a variety different teas, different things. So this first one here is a terrestrial setup for there we have it. This is T Alba Pelosum. This is the Nicaragua. Um, so yeah you see quite basic thick plant hide water bowl and I keep half of the substrate wet half dry and as you can see there is pretty much bang on half wet half dry and so yeah that's that one that's well also this one here has a lot more ventilation in the sides just along here and at the sides here and also in the bottom at each side it's a much drier living species this is the Ceratogyrus brachycephalus wild form this isn't long molded 
but yeah it's enclosure you say it's webbed it up pretty well it does need a little bit of water in there um, as you see here this one has got again it's got quite a big hide it just seems to spend most of its time out in the open it is unsexed as of yet Next up, this one, I'll just show quickly, this one actually houses a communal of 10 M. Balfouris. They've all sort of disappeared, but there are a couple of tunnel entry points at this end, you see, under that little leaf there there's also one into the cork bark there and they've sealed that up but again these are one centimeter slings so a one th 1 1.3 liter works sort of ideally for them they will get upgraded at a later date but my plan is to merge my two communals so when they come out of this It'll probably be going to a big setup with the other communal of five. And I have just noticed, I don't know if Lens is picking that up. We do have a malt there. So. There we have it. Balfari mold. Right now these again this is another 1.3 litre bray plast. You may see there. This houses my GBB which is currently up here. Doing well. No. This I've decided to house this arboreally. Um, no, no, they do tend to live more terrestrially in the wild. But as we all know, you give them a bit of height and let them go with the webbing, and things can come and begin to look really good. You see, this is only a small sling. Or a grown on sling. Hasn't got any of its adult colours coming through yet or anything like that. But yeah, just wanted to give you an example of using one of these setups arboreally. And I do have another one which I will show you now. So again, this is a 1.3 litre bray plast. This time you'll see that there's a cork tube in that one side there is some fake flowers and the spider that lives inside here is actually my P Metallica it's not the best of views if I'm honest again I housed Salmopius Aminias, um, Cambridges, I've got some Flamingo Childers in these setups. You see, they are quite versatile. You can put as many air holes as you want in. You can add them, as you see here, the, the holes that were in it originally I've actually sealed with hot glue because I was worried about the spider getting out at the time but yeah so that's just another example of the 1.3 litre bray plast and how i put them to use right so next up we have these which have the homemade cd enclosures 
No, this one has broken. The bottom has fallen off it and needs to be replaced. Um, it was actually my own fault. I kicked it when it was on the floor and the bottom broke off, but it's a whole separate story. So just a couple of examples of how I put them to use. So you see here, we've got a little setup and this actually houses my Hellestiadi, which you may see in the corner there. See, these are again are quite versatile. I find I use them, or I've used them for porkies, I've used them for all sorts of different things, really. Um, so that's my HDRD. And this one is just an example of how it can be used in a morphosorial setup. This one actually houses my Syria Pagopastorii. You may just see a foot down there, which is quite often about as much as I get to see it. Um, but yeah, see, just a big deep burrow right in the middle. Water bowl that's forever getting trashed and knocked over. But again, you see that one's got quite a deep substrate. I also have a Sahydraranius Raja set up in one of these in a really deep fossorial setup. And here is a more terrestrial type setup and this contains my Brachypelma Amelia you see if I might be able to bring her out there we are just a little tea probably due on malt quite soon if I'm honest but yeah that one's kept quite dry water bowl, a little bit of moss and a hide, quite basic again these aren't long term enclosures, they're um, only meant to house them for a few molts at a time before they eventually all end up getting upgrades so what I will do is I'll just give the moss a little bit of water. One thing I will say about these, if you are going to ever try and make them or anything like that yourself, is that this bottom edge can be a bit of a nightmare if you don't seal it properly. But basically, I've had it happen where I hadn't glued the bottoms all the way across. I thought I'd be able to pin it and hope that it'd work because there wasn't going to be a lot of weight in, but what it meant was water just leaked out all the time so just make sure that you get that part right so yeah that's that one right so that's the end of part one and um, like i say here's a long video if you've hung around this long and stuck it up to the end then i do thank you very much it's much appreciated um, so yeah, part two will come along pretty soon. Um, probably won't be so long, if I'm honest, as things get bigger. Um, there seems to be less variation, especially there is in my collection anyways. I tend to, like, you, as you might have seen, I try to use the same things in different ways if I can. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. And um, we shall see you in the next one. Cheers.